Let's take a look at fractional parts of numbers. This is the type of problem that you would see. And so we read this, 1 half of 20, or half of 20. Now, oftentimes you'd look at this and be all, some of you would be all, okay, well, half of 20, and you'd be able to find the answer for that, and you would just say 10. Now, how do we figure out that was 10? What we did is we took 20, which is our number that we are trying to figure out the fractional part for, and then we went ahead and divided by 2 there. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And then we just looked at one of those 10s, and then we'll talk about that in a little bit. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. Half of 20 is 10. Half of a number like, mm, I don't know, 8? Half of 8 is what? 8 what? 8 divided by 2. So we divide by that denominator there. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Taking this forward from there, let's take a look at when we have different denominators. 1 third of 24. Let's take a little look at that bar. The whole bar represents 24. Okay? The whole bar represents 24. The denominator tells us how many parts we're going to divide this bar into. We're going to divide this bar into three parts. To divide it into three parts, we draw two lines. One line there, one line there. So we divided 24 into three parts. 24 into three parts. So we can think of that um, number sentence, 24 divided by 3, equaling 8. And that's why each of these parts is now worth 8. Counting them out, it makes sense. 8, 16, then 24. One third of 24 is just now just one of these parts. We're looking at one of those parts. We're looking at 1 8 there, and that's why this is 8. 1 thir third of 24 is 8. Now the step forward from here is if we were to look at 2 thirds of 24, we would have to figure out that 8 number first, and then we'd have to look at 1 third of it, and then also another th third of it, so 2 thirds of it. 2 thirds of 24, we would take 24 divided by 3 first to get that 8. And then we would look at two of those parts, 8 times 2, which equals 16. 8 and 8 together is 16. 2 thirds of 24 is 16. A very common mistake is to just to say 2 thirds of 24 and leave it right here as that answer of 8, where you don't do that last step. Where you, the numerator, where you don't take the numerator into account, where you multiply by that numerator. So we have another problem here, two-fifths of 40. And then so sometimes it helps to kind of think about this. That's divided by. That's multiplied by. So we're going to divide by 5 first. We use our denominator first. We'll take 40 and divide it into 5 parts. That's what we did here. We took 40. So sometimes remembering that picture and what it is that we did, we divided into five parts first. One, two, three, and four. 40 divided by five is eight. That's why each of these is worth eight. And then it says to multiply by two. What it means is for two fifths, we're looking at two out of those five parts. And that's why this is eight times two which equals 16. So again, this is 2 out of those 5 parts that we looked at there. All right, your turn to try. Please go ahead and write out this whole sentence here, 1 third of 27. And then go ahead and write out as to what you think the answer is. Ideally, you'll also write down that number sentence you used. Did you take 27? Did you divide it by 3 to get 9? In this case, you would multiply by 1. 9 times 1 is still 9. 1 third of 27 
Maybe you drew a picture to help support your answer. Here's 27. Here is it divided into thirds. Each of those thirds is worth 9, and we were only looking at one-third. Here's another problem for you. Please figure out three-fourths of 20. Go ahead and hit pause. All right, for three-fourths of 20, maybe you should do this as you're learning this. We take 20, we divide it into four parts to begin with. So we take 20 and divide it into four parts. We get five. We take that answer of five and then we're multiplying it by three because we are looking at three of those parts. One, two, and three. So that's five, 10, and 15. Five times three equals 15. So three-fourths of 20 is 15. All right, so we just learned about fractional parts of numbers. Fractional parts of numbers. What would the denominator be? Let's just review now. What would the denominator be for this bar here? And then so this whole thing is divided into how many parts? The whole thing is divided into six parts. So I'll put the six here. Now, if we remember we were looking at one, two, three four, five of those parts, then this numerator will be five. So we're taking five sixths of this whole, which is 36, of all of that is 36. So we take 36 and do what? Divide by six to get six in this case. That's why each of these is six. And how many sixes are we looking at? That's what our numerator tells us that's what we haven't used yet. So we're looking at five of those sixes. So what's the number sentence that we write to look at five of those sixes? We go six times five, which equals 30. A common mistake would be to try and just multiply the numerator and denominator without taking into account what number we're figuring out there. So if you don't show your work and just happen to upon the right answer, you're just very lucky. You're just very lucky. Use the right strategy and approach when you're working with fractional parts of numbers.